Okay, so is the administration's show of force about getting Iran to the negotiating table, or are the actual winds of war beginning to blow? Let's talk about it with former foreign policy advisor to the Obama campaign, David DeFury. Retired from the Army Major General Vincent Bowles and representing Florida's 6th District Congressman and U.S. Army National Guard Special Forces Officer, Mike Walls. Good to have all of you with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I want to start with something because tonight the Wall Street Journal has had this report out that there may have been crossed wires. The the headline is intelligence suggests U.S. Iran misread each other, stoking tensions. Um, Senator Angus King, after being brief, said the unanswered question again is: Are they reacting to our assertions of action in the Middle East, or are we reacting to them? General, what triggers the kind of response, the show of force that we've been seeing this week? Shannon, thanks. Let me see if I can generate a little light instead of heat on the situation, because there's been a lot of heat going on. The biggest thing that is important for me to focus on is the forces that we're sending there are being sent because the commanding general, General McKenzie of Central Command, looked at the threat in the region and went to the National Command Authority and said, I need additional resources to counter this threat from Iran and Iran's proxies on attacking our forces. So they, he has asked for these forces. This isn't something where the administration has pushed the forces to him and said, go figure out what you want to do. He has put a request for forces in. The administration's responding to that request. The, so their first key now is to use that force to deter the Iranians from their actions. And that really is the key for us right now. And, and Congressman, you're shaking your head. You've been briefed. Yeah. You know more than all of us put together about this current situation there. So what should we know? So I'm on the Armed Services Committee. We were briefed earlier this week, and we're going to get a larger briefing uh, tomorrow. So the first is, is the intelligence credible? And I can tell you, and, and as you heard from Senator Rubio, it is. Uh, it, we have information on not just their actions, so we see their forces moving in the region, but also their intent, that they've been given instructions to prepare to attack Americans. We're looking at their surrogates, the Shia militias in Iraq, uh, what we've seen in the Strait of Hormuz and the naval activity and the, and the explosions that you saw, just saw on the tankers, and then also other proxies in Yemen and in Syria. So that's, it's well sourced and it's multiple sources. So the intelligence is credible and the general's right. This was from a request from the combatant commander, the general mm -hmm. in the region. What we're seeing here is that the sanctions are hurting the Iranian regime. They are looking to lash out and to hit back. And if you look from their point of view, what they've done in the past is either they've been able to hit Americans and we haven't done much about it. Remember, five, six, five to six hundred Americans were killed by Iranian proxies in Iraq during the Iraq conflict. Or, best case for them, they cause enough turmoil in our political system that we pull back and we pull these sanctions back. But at the end of the day, we're sending the signal loud and clear, and this is important. We're not just going to take action against Hezbollah or your other proxies. We will hold you, Iran, responsible and you at risk. That's why you're seeing B-52s and strategic assets. The best way to prevent war is to show strength and to cause them to back down. And David, everybody hoping we don't actually have to use any of these assets that are oh, over absolutely. there. Um, today, uh, the Wall Street Journal also in the headline, Trump told aides he doesn't want war with Iran. They talk about the fact that two U.S. military um, destroyers went through the Straits of Hormuz. There were no incidents today with that. They quote a senior defense official saying the deterrence part of this is going pretty well from our perspective. How much of it is about that, making sure there isn't a conflict? I think that's a lot of it. And and I don't have as much information as the congressman or the general, but I do believe that there is a credible threat from Iran. I think it was appropriate for us to move these ships into the, uh, the Gulf, and I think it was appropriate for us to move other forces to prepare for Iran and to deter Iran. There is a real threat. This is what Iran does. When it's unhappy with something the U.S. does or one of its enemies it does, it engages in retaliation, but doesn't retaliate head on. It uses its proxy forces, it engages in terrorism, and does other things things to strike civilian targets. So our, our, one of our targets are our personnel in Iraq. I served in the embassy in Baghdad. We saw this week the State Department is now evacuating that embassy because there is a credible threat, clearly. But as the news articles that you referred to earlier suggest, if you're confused about our policy on Iran, you're not alone because it is 
confusing. The president has taken a strong stance against Iran. He's ratcheted up sanctions. He said he wants to isolate Iran, but then he left his phone number with the Swiss embassy in Tehran, and he wants Iran to call, call him. him. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that pop song, Here's My Number, Call Me Maybe. <laughs> there was a dance that went with that, <laughs> yeah. too, which none of us are going to do on this show. Um, but, General, I mean, one of your specialties was logistics. You know about moving our forces around the world, what it takes. And, and, and so what does it say to you now, seeing some of these, um, you know, carriers and different things that are moving uh, into that region? We know that um, Iran is a much different game than Iraq. What does it say to you about the movements we've seen so far? Well, the first thing is it's a home game for them and it's an away game for us. So we have to make sure we come with the overwhelming force we need so the Iranians understand it is not in their national interest to attack us or take us on. It, it is just not worth it to them. Uh, at the same time, it, we're going to be predominantly at this point in time a naval, air, anti-missile defense operation that we're going to be going into. Uh, we do not want, with 120,000 forces, Iran has an army and a military of over 500,000 active duty. We are not going to be invading Iran with 120,000 forces right now. Right now, we've got the right component of forces we need to deter Iran and make sure they understand it's not in their best interest. Mm -hmm. All right, Congressman, quickly, we're almost out of time, but I want to give you a chance to respond to one of your um, colleagues. Uh, Congresswoman Alana Omar tweeting this, instead of barreling towards another reckless this war, we should be looking for ways to de-escalate tensions with Iran and other countries. No Iran war. Stop endless war. We know from, we, my response would be, uh, we know from the past and, and past Iranian behavior that they are emboldened by perceived weakness. And they back down with perceived strength, as David, as David would say. And, you know, in the past, if you look back in the 80s, when a lot of the senior commanders that are now in charge in Iran came up, they hit us hard in Beirut. They killed over 200 Marines. And what did we do? We pulled out of Lebanon, where they were pushing through their proxies. What happened in Iraq? We responded tactically. But we never held the Iranian regime responsible. And what the president is saying with these strategic forces is sending a message loud and clear, we will hold you responsible. That's actually the best way to prevent conflict. Uh, and, and, that's, and I think what the president's doing is absolutely right. In terms of the hundreds of thousands of troops, the Pentagon's job is to present options, best case and worst case, and to be able to respond. So I think some of that leaking and then people reacting is a little hyperbolic. Well, the president's saying today he hopes not. And, and all during his campaigns, he talked about pulling us out of all these things. So I think a lot of folks are hoping that this ratchets down very quickly. Thank you all for your perspectives. Great to have you. Thanks. Thank you.